Hey friends, adepts, welcome back. This lesson is all about empowering you to understand that what is most important above all else is to prioritize your state of being, your feeling state. So you have to feel good, you have to desire to feel good above all else. Now this is a bit of a tricky thing because often we are way too focused on the thing we think we desire. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being focused or excited about the things and objects and permission symbols out there in the circumstances that we're excited about. For example, relationships, cars, houses, jobs, doing what we want to do, the trip that we want to take, etc. Money, all these things that excite us in the external world, it's all great. They're all permission symbols for us to anchor ourselves into a greater conviction of infinite abundance and infinite capability. So it's an amazing permission slip. External reality is an amazing way for us to become more convinced of our eternal, infinite, abundant nature and our creatorship status. So that is all fine. It's great to have these imaginations come up, these desires for certain things come up. However, what we need to realize and what many people sort of trip over in their journey is the idea that their happiness is derived from the things that they think they desire. And I've addressed this in some ways previously, but I'll address it again because it's important. It seems to be a persistent issue. It seems to be a persistent habit. So here's what often happens. Let's say I'm in a state of excitement. In my state of excitement, spirit is able to freely communicate to me using my imagination. And suddenly I have this vision of, say, a new car or a new relationship or a new house or a new job or a new state of being or a new spiritual realization or a new location to move into whatever it is but let's just use one example to keep it simple let's say in my state of excitement i suddenly feel like moving to boulder i previously lived in north carolina in a state of excitement i feel like moving to boulder i have all the capabilities of actually making that manifest and in fact to be more precise as you know through the parallel reality lessons is that it already exists. My parallel version of myself that lives in Boulder, that is two or three or four years older than me living in North Carolina, is already there. It already coexists with my other present reality of living in North Carolina. Now, I need to simply shift my vibratory state in order to start to make visible within my linear reality experience the parallel coexistent state of the manifest reality of me living in Colorado, in Boulder. In this case, I am right here talking to you from my home in Boulder, Colorado. So in that state of excitement, I get this new vision to move to Boulder, Colorado. It excites me. It suddenly comes up for me as a really exciting thing. Now, if I were to be too focused on manifesting that particular thing and forget that what it's really about is to feel good, because why do I want to move to Boulder, Colorado in the first place? To feel better, to feel like I'm more in a space where I belong. In other words, to feel better. But if I, along the, along the process of making that a visible reality to my consciousness, I get, I despair, I start to mistrust the timing of things. I start to worry too much about the details. I start to take on control of my environment and lack and lose control of my vibratory state or lose sight of my vibratory state being the creator of my reality, not the other way around. Then what happens is that I lower my frequency to such an extent that something will happen that will postpone the making visible of that reality of me living in Boulder already. Why? Because my vibratory state drops below a certain level and below a certain level it cannot experience the things that are representative of that higher excitement level. I will attract things into my visible manifest experience that are representative of the state of being that I'm in. So if I'm in a state of being of negativity for too long and despair and oh, I'm not making it to Colorado, oh, I don't have the money to do it. If I focus overly on the lack and the details and the timing of things, and I forget that it's all about how I feel in the first place, and that I even want to go to Boulder, Colorado because I want to feel even more amazing, if I forget that it's about the feeling state, it's not about the circumstances, then I lower my frequency, I feel stuck 
I feel like a victim of this universe again, and in that vibratory state, nothing representative of a higher state of excitement can reach me, can reach my visible consciousness, can, made, can be made visible. Nothing can be made visible that is not matching your vibratory state of being. So we need to somehow shift out of that resistance, uproot that lack, see where the belief comes from, see that it no longer serves us, as we've explored in the last couple of lessons. And from that state of higher abundance and trust and faith, having uprooted the belief of lack, we now feel that much better and we remember it is about feeling connected no matter what. It's about feeling connected to the infinite abundance of the universe no matter what. It's about feeling infinitely connected to our inner enlightenment no matter what, etc. So when we do that, when we put our feeling state first above all else, then all else will follow our feeling state as it always does. So get out of the habit or tenaciousness of being overly focused on watching the physical manifestation germinate. Don't stay with the seeds that you've already planted. Don't watch them to death. Just let the sunlight and the rain and the air take care and the dirt take care of that seed growing naturally into a plant until the plant is being delivered to your doorstep. You are only responsible for planting new seeds and reaping the benefits of once these seeds have grown into realities. You have nothing to do, ideally, with the in-between process of how the seed manages to become a tree or a plant or a flower. But many people are very convinced that they need to plant the seed, then go sit there, watch there, feel absolutely miserable because it ha doesn't happen fast enough and because they don't have the creative intent to create more seeds for themselves. So they put all their eggs in one basket, they lose their vibratory state of feeling good and they wait for that seed to germinate and fully grow into the tree that they want it to be. If we do this, we quite literally kill the effortlessness of the process of bringing to you effortlessly the things that are a representation of your true being. If you instead flow and you plant a seed here with excitement, then you let go of it and you plant a seed there with excitement and then you move on to the next most exciting idea or action or belief and then to the next most exciting feeling or the most expansive understanding or the best video that I ever shot or whatever it may be that excites you the most next or to go for tea with that friend you haven't seen for a year, or to read that book you always wanted to read. Whatever excites you the most, just keep planting those new seeds, forget about the previously planted seeds. And before you know it, somehow a plant will be planted right in front of your face. And you will see that those are the effortless results of that seed having germinated all by itself using your higher consciousness energy, unbeknownst to you. You don't need to know it from this level of your brain self, your brain consciousness. And so effortlessly you're planting seeds and then later on you're enjoying to the reaping of the benefits, the results of those seeds. And you don't have anything to do with the in-between process. So don't wait for your seeds to grow into plants. Continue to plant seeds and enjoy reaping the benefits of previous seeds planted that are now made manifest. So always be in the state of appreciating what has already been created appreciating that desires that you previously planted already have been effortlessly fulfilled somehow and enjoy simultaneously the process of planting new seeds and being in that excited anticipation without lack, creator's state of being. Now when you do this, you will more effortlessly attract the life of your dreams and you will therefore feel better all the time. But the feeling better all the time has to sort of be the priority. If you're feeling better all the time, you'll have access to what is the next most exciting seed to plant. You're never really waiting. You're never really stagnating. I'm not saying there cannot be valley experiences. I'm not saying that there cannot be, um, you know, what nor normal people call lows, like highs and lows or ups and downs. Yes, there are downs. I call them valley experiences. And they're great. They're integration periods. They're abundant in their own way. So they will happen, not everything will always be as accelerated as it is at certain peak moments. However, overall, pretty much all the time, you no longer have to feel lack and suffering in that way anymore because you are now able to define everything positively. Why? Regardless of, regardless of outcome and circumstance and success in the physical reality. Why? Because what you really want, and you know that this is what you really want, you're clear on it, you really want to feel good no matter what. 
If you get into the habit of feeling good no matter what, I promise you everything else will follow you. You will have access to natural wisdom, to natural unconditional love, to natural unconditional support, to infinite endless abundance and resources and creative intentions and imaginations. You will gain access to whatever it is that you need to truly become yourself on all levels of your being in that much more of a crystallized, perfect, expressionate way, enjoyable way. So always have the priority be how you experience yourself, how you feel about yourself. When you can master that, you have literally mastered your state of being by knowing that the circumstances are empty and meaningless and that all that matters is that you feel good. And as long as you keep your integrity intact, as long as you keep in the love and the respect of other people's free will, you can pretty much shift your focus to whatever you want to in order to start to bypass the resistance, to feel amazing about yourself, have the wisdom and the transparency and the transcendent awareness to uproot all negative beliefs when they are relevant, when they come up for you to deal with. And you can always choose to feel good no matter what. You can always choose to define what is happening now as a positive sign, as a really good omen, as a really amazing confirmation of your previous desires, as a really amazing confirmation of your amazingness as a creator. Everything confirms abundance. Everything confirms existence. Everything confirms life. Everything affirms life. So why don't you do the same so that you line up with that life affirming presence and then feel good all the time. And when you feel good all the time, good things start to happen to you all the time. You will still be challenging yourself in many ways, but those challenges will be experienced in a very positive way and you'll have the means to handle them and use them for expansion, not for contraction. I hope this makes sense. Prioritize your feeling state over everything else because it literally is your switchboard. It's your control panel for what happens out there. When you realize that it's not about what happens out there, but that you can actually control what happens out there by shifting internally and shifting the nubs, turning the dials in such a way that you feel good about your frequency state, and then natural magic will occur. It has to, because physical reality reflects the state of being that you're in. So I want you to write down a couple of reasons why you feel circumstances are more valuable to you, more important to you than your state of being. And why do I ask this is because it is a very persistent idea that, okay, I would rather have a million dollars than to feel good. So ask yourself, would I rather have a million dollars right now or $10 million or a hundred million dollars, or would I rather feel good no matter what? And it's a tricky thing because people identify feeling good with circumstances. So this is just one question that really shows that to you. But I can also ask you, would you, really, would you rather want a really good relationship, a really amazing relationship, or would you rather want to feel good all the time? And many people would go for the external thing, the relationship. Nothing wrong with this, but we've just conditioned ourselves to see circumstances as important and meaningful and state of being transmitting. But circumstances have never transmitted a feeling into ourselves. Only ever we insert a feeling state into ourselves. And we utilize what we see in the empty smoke and mirrors display of the illusion of consciousness that we call circumstances. We use what we see to give ourselves permission to feel a certain way. Now, why not feel permission to always feel good, regardless of whether you're manifesting a shitty car or an amazing car, a, a broken relationship or a breakup or an amazing relationship? Why not give yourself permission to feel good always and always define what's occurring in the most positive, ridiculously amazing way? When you do this, again, you're mastering your frequency. So write down a few reasons why you have a greater attachment to the outcome of the circumstance than to actually simply feeling amazing. And once you start to see those, those erratic ideas, those illogical, flawed um, belief systems that tell you that it's beneficial to focus too much on the circumstances and to want the thing more than you want the experience of the thing or the feeling that comes with the thing, when you realize that that is an illusion, you can start to see your own beliefs about it more clearly if you write it down, especially. And this allows you to be more uh, remembering of what is truly important to you, which is to always be in a state of feeling good and to do your best to always be in that mastered state of feeling amazing. Not saying you'll always succeed in always immediately feeling good, doesn't matter, but you know that that's the most important thing that you'll attempt.
And when you put effort into that, when you put not effort, but you know, attention and intention and desire into simply wanting to feel good no matter what happens in the circumstances, you will become a master of your frequency and you will start to master your reality. And you will start to see that you are the creator of your circumstances through your state of being only. Thank you so much, enjoy, and repeat this lesson at least once more before you continue with the next. And as always, feel free to share your results with us in the study group. This would be appreciated because we can all learn from each other and share and help each other out. So enjoy creating your reality through your state of being and prioritizing, coming to this great awareness that you want to prioritize how you feel. Make a pact with yourself. Write this down if you want to. Write down a little paragraph that states very powerfully and maybe even poetically your own agreement with your own state of being, being king. You agreeing to yourself that you're going to prioritize your feeling state for the next so many months or your whole life, but at least try it as a test. Once you kickstart it for a few months, it will become a natural habit and a natural desire and you'll naturally start to see the wisdom in this approach. Okay, enjoy. Thank you.